Hey YouTube, it's Alicia here. Hope everybody is having a great day, none other. I am coming to give y'all a video, and this is a wrestling doll, and I'm talking about AEW, but I'm gonna talk about the women's division, none other. I will be um, mentioning several other names and things because the reason I'm gonna be talking about the women's division, I'm just wanted to talk about the women's division in whole from the beginning until now so um aew got started in january of 20 january 1st of 2019 so they've been um in going on in three years during those three years as y'all know they have picked up several superstars even some of wwe's former superstars okay but i wanted to come and come and talk about um, what they was planning on doing and stuff. So I was under this assumption that Cody Rose was the founder of AEW because he helped build the company. He helped build the company off his back, him and his brother, including his wife as well, Brandy Rose. Now, do now Brandy Rose during this time made a lot of promises for that women's division. What she promised, she promised better quality wrestling, opportunities to anybody, and great female wrestling. Okay, so the first person there, I remember them signing was Britt Breaker, Dr. Britt Breaker. Okay, as we all know, she is a, a um, she has a doctoring as 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 a dentist, as a dentist. Excuse me, y'all, as a dentist. And thing, I'm going okay. All right, and then I remember the second um, person they signed was the transgender wrestler, um, Nyla, Nyla Rose. Okay, I'm going to come and talk about her and my opinion of her because I do respect um, certain things about her. And then I'm going to tell you uh, what, how I feel about her. So I was going, okay, all right. All right, for what I have saw from that first year, it was doing pretty good. Second year, okay. And they had a female wrestler by the name of Big Swole. So if you haven't heard of Big Swole, Big Swole is current WWE superstar Cedric Alexander's wife. Okay, she had this um pretty good program with Britt Baker. But to me, I felt like AEW kind of dropped the ball with it. Now, the reason I say they kind of dropped the ball with it, you have this enticing buildup. And I really felt like they was trying to um, underhand, undermine, and let me just say, underhanded, undermine Big Squirrel's ability. She was good. She was like their huge minority wrestler, popular wrestler on over there. And if I, I go and I look, and I actually... Actually, a couple months back, I actually did a question with w about WWE's women division and AEW's women's division at the same time, and I asked them who are, are the two biggest, um, I don't say minorities that is not giving, not getting the opportunities. So this was back in 2020. 2021. Yeah, this was back in 2021 on my. Um, Twitter and everybody was had literally said Naomi and Big Swell, but I'll digest with the Naomi part. So they said Big Swell was not getting the opportunities that she deserves. They like overshadowing and stuff. And a lot of people was like, because of my con, because of this question, a lot of people was voicing their opinion by like, saying, "Oh, they like push heavily pushing Brooke, Brooke Baker while they are heavily pushing her. We want to see." other women get the opportunities okay i gotta agree that was something and stuff and then to me i really take offense to tony Khan. so recently um tony Khan did this interview with um ring the bell over on here on youtube now if y'all have not heard of ring the bell on youtube ring the bell on youtube is a wrestling podcast Hosted by um, Diaz, Paloma, and um, um, uh, I'll get, I'll get, it's two more, it's, I can't think of the name, but then they always have 
guest stars, um, guest wrestlers from the indie circuit and stuff. And they all been doing a lot of interviews with formal WWE superstars and stuff like that. And then they recently did a um a full um video on it on Sharia, better known, formerly known as Paige in the WWE as well. Okay, I digest. And thing, and he did the interview. And when you think of Ring the Bell, Ring the Bell is all about female wrestling. So Diaz is like, I kind of saw snippets where Diaz is asking him questions about it, about female wrestling, where Tony Khan is turning it and mostly talking about more of the men side of wrestling. So my thing is how you can come on a come on a wrestling show that is mostly for female wrestlers and more and mostly talk about men wrestling. That's not that's not a thing. Okay, I'm just bringing that to y'all attention. But I know D is supposed to be putting that out soon, so I'm just saying. Okay, so I had a problem with how um, Big Swell was done. So when Big Swell asked for her release and Tony Khan, he was being so how you say condescending condescending about her complaint, what's going on in AEW and stuff. So I have, I'm going to say, and I will, and I'm saying this, and I'm sorry, and um, y'all can look at me with a side eye and stuff. I might not um, like um, the pro, um, I might not like certain things that AEW does, but I stand behind women, regardless what. And how Tony Khan tried to condescending and to me, I felt like kind of disrespected Big Squall. I was like, ugh, and stuff. And then a lot of other wrestlers from the company is like kind of co-trying to co-sign with Tony Khan. Like I'm, I'm, I'm going to say a comment. I'm going to tell it, do that towards the end. So um, that is that. So I feel like that women's division, yeah, they kind of built it up from when they first started. The first year when they started, they was they we was expecting a lot, and they have they delivered in those two years from twenty nineteen to twenty twenty to twenty nineteen to twenty twenty. They kind of delivered. Well, after twenty twenty, going into twenty twenty one and twenty twenty two. They um have to me. I haven't felt like they have delivered a lot because they would they made a lot of promises and things. And I think that has a lot to do with why I have a lot to do with because I'm gonna talk about a couple other females. So let's get on some of the other females. I felt like um storylines didn't go well at all and stuff. So yeah, let me get this pulled up right quick. So I'm gonna I'm just go around and I am going to talk about a couple. Okay, as let me just talk about Bookbreaker. As y'all know, Bookbreaker is their favorite golden child right now. She is the golden child of that women's division. She's I, I'm not doubting her, but I mean can y'all um AEW writers and stuff give other women the opportunities because you're always focusing on Brooke Baker. Brooke Baker, and then the other person y'all are mostly focusing on a lot of now is Ty Conti, okay? If anybody don't know, Ty Conti is actually married to Sammy Guevara, and let me just put it that way. So, those are the two women that they're most heavily featured, and Jay Cargill, okay? I noticed that it's a lot of, I feel like sometimes when it comes to that women's division over there in AEW, this is just from what I have seen. It is some favoritism going on. So we're going to go over some women. I feel like they have never give, gave her rats poop to. Okay, so let, okay, now but let's start. I want to, let me start with. Ruby Soho, and I have to co-sign something that Paloma Star said. She always plays the underdog, but I want to see her. Um, she always had played the underdog on WWE, and she also has played the underdog over here. I really feel like it, when she came over to, from when she um, was signed to AEW, I feel, I'm going to say it, I feel like, and I'm going to say it, 
they should have made start building her. She should have been the most focused. The last these last two years, she should have been the most focused. She should have been focused on of putting her in that top women's content top in the top women's contention and stuff like that. Okay. Um, same thing with Sharia the David David um David and stuff. Same thing with her. She's um she's a veteran of the sport and um I feel like the way that they have done her as well is not in um, should she should also be in the highest contention, okay. Um we're gonna come back to her. Da -da 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 -da. Let's see. All right, Kiss, Chris Sotlander. She's like in a program right now. I don't know what I don't know with who, but I know she's with somebody. And like, I really feel like she should be highly built up into the top contention of the women's title belt contention because that's always okay. Madison Rain, um, Jamie Hager. Uh, let's just see. Anna J and Anna J. Okay, so let me talk about. We're gonna get ready to talk about some. I really feel like some powerhouse females. So, uh, all right. So let me talk about Athena. Since Athena has appeared on AEW, I think she has shown what she you the WWE could have did, but they didn't do and stuff. Do I think the way that they are, the way they're going about with her program is up to the standard that I feel like they could go with her? Um, no, I don't. But I'm not, well, I'm not bashing the programming of AEW. I'm just saying there's some things they need to fix. And that's one thing is the way they go with the programming with some of the, some of their minority um, female wrestlers. And I'll come back at a later date and do men. Because I'm just saying with certain people, they are not being put on a product. It's certain people, um, like I always say, it's always some certain people that wrestling companies will put on a pedestal. WWE does it, and AEW does it. Now, AEW might say different, but if you go from when they first started in 2019, to now, you see, is certain people they put on a pedestal. I feel like at the moment they have two people they put on a pedestal. They have Brooke Baker, who they put on a pedestal, and then they have none other, Jay Cargill, who also is on a pedestal. Now, let me just talk about Jay's girls. Now, um, let me see if I can find the names. I know it's Kira Hogan. Uh, let me just wait, wait, let me just go under her name. Okay, they are not gonna let you. I know it's Kira Hogan and Velvet Red Velvet. Kira Hogan and Red Velvet and stuff. Kira Hogan is not listed at the moment, but I'm I'm just saying. Um, um I really feel the way that they do them two is not in the right way, not in a great way. Um, and let me go back up here to the champions. Let me see if they have a women's tag team division. Let me see. They have a men's tag team division, but they don't have a women's tag team division. I'm, I remember at one point I heard a rumor a couple months back that they were supposed to do a women's tag team division in AEW, but I don't know if that happened or not, so I digest. But I'm just saying it's a lot of people and things. So let me come and talk about, a lot of people has a lot to say about Nyla Rose in um, the, hold on, in Nyla Rose. So as if any of y'all don't know, before I forget, um, 
Tony Khan kind of owns, and let me just say it loosely, kind of owns ROH. Um, and then, do I feel um, they're going to be bringing those wrestlers in or not? Mm, those wrestlers was released. They got to get new contracts. So, I know for a fact that some of them is on TNA Impact. Um, some kind of way AEW does um, stuff with AE, AEW does stuff with TNA Impact. So we're going to have to see where that goes because we know. Um, and then it's a lot of some of the people who wrestle has a lot to do with production. And I would and I'm I've got to go over that. Like let me go over that. Okay, it's the Jackson brothers um, and stuff. You have the Jackson Brothers, I mean, Kenny Omega, um, just to name a few. You got a lot of people who is wrestling has a lot to do with the production of the show and stuff. So you have to consider, uh, are, they, are they benefiting from working backstage and working in front of the stage as, and then also getting title opportunities? You have to think of that and stuff like that. So, yeah, I wanted, let me just mention that. But I don't know if, um, like I said, I don't think Brandy Bros have anything to do with the, yeah, because I remember when Brandy Bros first was on there, she was over the, uh, over the um, women's division in general, and she, like, made a lot of promises for that women's division. Some things she did, um, she did um, do, but then some things did not come to fruition what she wanted to do for that women's division in general. I just feel like what they had promised from the beginning for that women's division, they did not live up to. Now, let me come back. Like I said, I wanted to come and talk about Naya, Naya Rose, and this is the last thing. And somebody had um, DM me a couple uh, months back. And ask me what I do a breakdown of Nyla Rose. I'm not going to do a breakdown on Nyla Rose. But I'm going to, they said they want me to give my opinion on Nyla Rose. Since she is a transgender wrestler in AEW wrestling in the women's division. Do, do I think she has an upper hand when it comes to that women's division? Um... First and foremost, I do respect her wrestling style and her wrestling ability. Let me just say that at first. She's a pretty good wrestler. She's a strong wrestler at that. But do I think of her being a, the tra transgender wrestler, do she have a upper hand? Do she have an upper hand as a female wrestler in general? I feel like I do think she does with her abilities you gotta think she's a transgender wrestler that's all i'm gonna say a transgender wrestler but i do think sometimes when it comes to title belts opportunities and her her power that she does have a upper hand i mean some of y'all might not think she has an upper hand but i really believe so um she do have an upper hand and Things because some of her sometimes some of the times that she has been champion, I has questioned. Okay, she's champion, but I feel and I always said to myself, she always had an upper hand. And I'm gonna get a little bit. I'm gonna end it on this. Do y'all think Nia Rose because she's a she's a transgender wrestler? Do you think she has an upper hand? Let me just tell you, this was a respectful video. I was just analyzing the women's division from the beginning to now. All right, y'all, it's time for, it's time to get this, time to get this video popping. And let me hear what y'all think about um, some of the things that I talked about coming, doing with the AEW Women's Division. Until then, I'm Alicia. Don't forget to thumbs up this video, comment below, and subscribe to my channel.